this is Ellie. Uh, welcome to my Photoshop. Um, I use curves and adjustments for most of the color adjusting that I do. And I'm going to use it here to neutralize the pink color cast of this image. And I'll take it a step further and create something a little bit more stylized. Um, so here in this example, this is the color straight from SL. And it's not that I don't like it. It's got this pink to it, which of course I love. Um, but it's a good example to show how to neutralize that. So take a look at the original here, especially the face um, is where you see it the most. If I turn on my adjustment, now that's less pink. It's got a more neutral look to it. So here's the original. Here's with the adjustment. If I take that a step further, here's the original. And here's a more stylized version of it. And I didn't really have to do that much to get this extreme um, effect. So I'll show you how to do those. I'm going to turn this off. And we'll start with the color the way it came right from SL. So on the layer palette, um, the black and white circle brings up adjustment layers, and I'm going to choose curves. Little menu here, RGB, is red, green, blue. Now you might think that because this is a little pinkish that we'd go to the reds, but we're not going to. Because really, the pink is more magenta than red. And magenta is the opposite of green. Now, let's take a second here and explain a little bit of this. Um, when you're working with digital images in Photoshop, you're probably working with RGB, red, green, blue. The opposite of red is cyan, which is like turquoise. The opposite of green is magenta. And the opposite of blue is yellow. So here, we're only given the option to work with red, green, or blue. If we need to work with cyan, magenta, or yellow, we have to go to their opposites here. So this picture has too much pink in it, magenta, that's green. And I'm going to bring up the green curve. What I want to do is add some green to neutralize the magenta. And I'm just going to grab this curve, and I'm going to click it, I'm going to click it and drag it just a little bit up and out and give it that little bulge. Now look at the picture here. It's got less of that pinkish. It might even be a little too far with some green here in the shadows. So if I select that, I can bring it in a little bit. It's very, it is very sensitive. You got to get used to it. Um, so let me turn that off. There's my original. There's my adjustment. That's it. It's just one adjustment. Um, one of the benefits of adjustment layers is that you can just go back in and make that adjustment. If you were using, for example, image, adjustments, curves, once you do whatever you do and you hit OK, you're stuck with it. You can't go back and change it. You just have to do another adjustment on top of that, which isn't really good for your image. I'm going to hit cancel there. But if I have this adjustment layer, I can always go in and change this. And I'm going to do that right now. So we started out with, here's my original. And I used a curves adjustment layer to neutralize it. Um, if this isn't already visible, this adjustment curve, and you click or double click that, this should come up for you. I'm going to go in and go back to that green channel. So by, by bringing this up a little bit, I've neutralized it. But if I bring that up even more, see it's starting to get really kind of light, but then I can bring at the um, lower end, if I bring that down, now I start to get this contrast on that channel. And that gives it a really nice stylized effect. right? So I can use this same technique to get something fixed or to apply some kind of an effect to it. I think there's a lot of filters out there that will do various color effects, but I tend to do everything um, manually because I like that, that control over what I'm doing here. Um, one thing I'm going to turn this off and go back to my original example here is you'll notice when I turn this on and off, only the figure is going to change. My background is going to stay the same. So now if you look at this mask here, you can see the black and white, the white where the figure is, 
and the black where the background is, that's because a mask allows me to, to determine where to apply or not apply whatever adjustment that layer gives me. I'm going to turn that back off and turn the one I'm working on back on. So you can see I turn that on. The adjustment is applied to everything and my thumbnail here is completely white. If I take a brush at 100% opacity and black and I make sure that that thumbnail is selected, I'll know that because there's a little line around it. If I paint here, what I'm doing is I'm painting back in um, what's underneath. That um, painting here, you can see it's black on the thumbnail, is basically hiding this effect and revealing what's underneath. I'm going to turn this off and on. So you can see now my adjustment layer is only affecting the area that has the white. Now, how you go about doing this black and white, there's a million different ways. So you can see here I'm painting it. I can take a hard brush and paint that and try to get in, you know, nice and close to the edges. Right. I can do it that way. Or I can use various um, selection tools. Right, I can try to use the magic wand to select this water here, and uh, I might have to change different settings, but uh, you'll figure that that part out. I'm not going to teach here. Um, and then edit, fill with black. You can see it filled in that edge there. So d depending on how you're comfortable, you're going to figure out how to, um, let me just move this back in. You're going to figure out what you want to hide and show. You can also, you know, if you just want to take, let me get that brush back, a soft edged brush and have it a big brush and have that kind of fade, you can do that too. See, I'm painting it in here. Right? So how you want to um, paint on that is up to you. I had a list of everything I wanted to say, but it just uh, turned off, so let me find it. Um, using a mask. Okay. So you can be you can apply this to the whole thing by just having that white, or you can paint black and white on it to figure out where you want to apply that adjustment. Now, if I don't like this, I can always just select all, edit, fill with white, hit OK, and now deselect. I have that blank white canvas, and it applies to the entire image, and I can start from scratch. I can go in there with my brush and paint or a selection tool or whatever I want to do with it, or you can fade it in. Um, I'm going to alt-click on this mask. That's what that mask looks like. If you want to see the mask of my example, um, you can see I have that nice sharp um, difference between the figure and the background. But my mask looks like this. I'm not going to teach you how to do that now. That's a whole other tutorial. Um, so there it is, how to use adjustment layers and masks to um, correct or stylize your image. Both curves and masking take some time to get comfortable with. So you definitely have to spend some time experimenting. Uh, I hope that helps.